Hello, welcome to the Maya Tool Belt. This is Michael. Today, we're going to talk about adding your own custom channels and attributes to an object. So to do that, first I'm going to go to the Create menu and Create a Locator. So you can find us down toward the bottom, so Create Locator. We'll click this button and I'll hide the grid. I get this simple kind of crosshair looking object. And this is Maya's uh, kind of a dummy object. It's just a object that has no kind of uh, attributes of its own aside from the uh, typical channels of indicating where it is in the scene. So we'll be adding our own custom attributes to this dummy object called a locator. And we can rename it just by double clicking up here in the channel box. And we'll call this uh, custom thing. Okay, so now to start adding attributes, we can go to Modify, Add Attribute. We also have Edit Attribute, which allows you to edit attributes you've already created, and then Delete Attribute. If you've added one you don't want anymore, you can use this to delete. But first we're going to start adding. Add Attribute. So, we see our Add Attribute for the custom thing that we've named, our locator. And we mainly be looking at the new tab because there are particle and control tabs up here, but they kind of go over, they do different things based on what you're wanting to do. But for new, we're creating a new attribute. So, first is what they call the long name. And if you if you look at my uh, channel control video I did uh, previously, I kind of go over what a long name is versus a nice name. But the long name will be the name that shows up in a channel box or in the attribute editor unless you have a nice name and you have nice name displayed just to explain that quickly if in the channel box over here on the right if I first move this out a little bit if I go to in the channel box here if I say edit channel names right now I have nice names displayed if I go to long names and actually let me hide this just so you look at what's here now you see I have translate X translate Y so on click at edit channel names long you see they actually remove all of the spaces between the uh, words so translate X and everything stays the same local position X down here stays the same it's just they re it just becomes one long string of a word and if I go to edit channel names short they become like the first letter of each word. So tr translate X becomes TX. To go edit channel names nice. You see it gives us our, the nice name, which are more readable and have words spaced out. So for the long name, what they're looking for is that one word string. And we'll come back to that in just a second. And then we have override nice name, where you can check this box and put in the nice name, which is the if you want to put in a custom name that shows up like this when you have edit channel names nice selected. If you don't have this checked, it will generate its own nice name based on the long name you put in using the uh, string of words. And when you capitalize one of the words in that string, it will read that as putting a space there for the uh, automatic nice name. Or create your own nice name by checking this box. So we have make attribute keyable, displayable, or hidden. Again, if you look at the channel control uh, video I already showed, uh, I explained the difference between keyable, displayable, and hidden. So I definitely uh, I'll suggest you. I definitely suggest you check that video out. I'll actually put a link right here. Just check out the channel control video. It's relatively short, but it talks about a lot of this stuff when it comes to keyable, displayable, or hidden attributes and then data type. And this is the main focus of this add attribute command. You can choose what kind of attribute you want to add based on these names. You have vector, integer, string, float, boolean, and enum or enumerate. So a vector, and actually what I'm going to do is we're going to add one of each of these and for the long name for each one I'll say 
example, in this case, vector. And if I'm going to just not override the nice name, and it'll use the capitalization of the word vector here and create its own nice name based on that. We'll see in a minute. I'll just leave all the attributes as keyable, which means you can set animation keys for them. So the data type is a vector. And then attribute type, scalar, which is the default. And then per particle array, which is not really uh, accessible for the vector data type. And now there is numeric attribute properties, which has a minimum, maximum, and default uh, settings, or the enum names. Now the enum names obviously will go with the enum data type. So for the vector data type, we've done everything we can for that type of attribute. So we're just going to say add. So long name, example vector, data type is vector, and add. So if I choose my locator over here and look at the channel box, you'll see some new channels have been added. Example vector x, example vector y, example vector z. So what the vector data type will do is add an x, y, and z uh, channels similar to the translate x, y, z and rotate x, y, z and so on. So example vector x, y, z. So we're going to try again with example integer and choose the integer data type. Scalar is still the only attribute type that we have available to us but now the numeric attribute properties has become available. So what this does is it gives us a value box that has a minimum, a maximum, and a default value. So let's just say for example our integer data type will be a minimum of negative 10 a maximum of 10 and our default is 0. The new names is not available since it's not an enumerate data type and we'll hit add. So now we have example integer over here in our channel box and it is a data type if I select that channel and middle click and drag I can drag it all the way back to negative 10 I can drag it up all the way to positive 10 and it won't go beyond those numbers. If I type in the number 20 to enter it'll go to 10 because that's the maximum value. And similarly with these example vectors by middle click and drag I can go back an infinite amount because there's no limits on a vector. So I can say a vector of 2000 negative 500 and then like 0 0.006 or 5 and hit enter and those values will take back to 0 for now example integer 0 is, a de is our default middle value and also just to make this list not quite so uh, dense I'll, I will use the channel control window again look at that video to see more about it and I'll go to the channel control and I'm going to select all of my non-custom channels and I'll move them over to be hidden so now instead of having translate X Y Z and scale and so on all I'll display in the channel box are my custom channels that I'm adding right now so then we don't have a huge list of things that are not pertaining to this lesson so example string I choose string the numeric attributes are no longer available. The new name is not available. It's a scalar attribute. That's all we have available here. So that's all we can do. So example string, hit add. And nothing shows up over here on the channel box as we have done before with the other ones. But what we'll need to do is to find our custom string is to go looking in the attribute editor for this uh, locator. I'm going to close the add attribute window for now select my locator, control A, and I'll go to the custom thing object node as opposed to the shape node. So it's custom thing shape. I want to look at custom thing. At the very bottom is extra attributes. If I open this you can see that our example vector is here with our X, Y, and Z box. Our example integer with a slider that goes from negative 10 to positive 10 with a default value where it started at 0. And here we have example string, which allows us to put in any text we want. 
So what a string attribute does, it allows you to use this text box if you're using any kind of mail commands or scripting languages or so on to do your own custom tools and whatever. You're adding this string attribute that you can use to, to pull in data from a script, which we're not running any script right now, but just so you know, if you want to add a string attribute to an object, you can with the add attribute uh, window. So we'll open our, we need to close the attribute editor for now, modify add attribute. Now we'll do example float. Click on float. Again, we have our numeric attribute properties with a minimum, maximum, and default available. So for a float, let's just say, let's say minimum of zero, a maximum of a hundred, and default zero. So let's say it starts at zero and you can go up to a hundred in this particular example. And hit add. So you see example float has been added here. If I click on this and middle, middle mouse and drag, you'll see I can't go beyond zero in the negative, but I can go up and scale up to 100 and won't go any further than that. And let's look at the attribute editor and see that example float right here. So the difference between example integer and example float, you'll see here in the attribute editor that the float has decimal points. For example integer, if I move the slider, see it goes from 0 to 1, 2, 3, so on. For example, float, if I, as I move this, you'll see I'm going up and I have three decimal point values beyond just the uh, whole number. So I can go up to 14.371. So if you want to have that kind of control in this attribute, you use a float attribute as opposed to an integer. Integer has whole numbers only. So if I type in, say, 1.5, hit enter, it'll round up to 2. But for example, float, if I type in 1.5, enter, it'll go to 1.5. Okay, so that's the main difference between integer and float attributes. All right, let's select our locator again, modify, add attribute. And our next attribute to add is boolean, and we'll call it example boolean. No numeric values, no enumerate names available, scalar attribute type. And again, the per particle array thing will be for our particle attribute, which we're not doing in this particular video. We'll get to that later with a particle video. So it will always be scalar. So example, boolean, and hit add. So now it adds to our channel box, example boolean, and it says off. Type in 1, enter to turn it on. Type in 0, enter to turn it off. So a Boolean attribute is a on or off switch. And we can again open the attribute editor and look down here. There's a checkbox in our attribute editor to display an on and off switch for this example Boolean. Back to our add attribute window. And now for the last one, enum. We'll select that and say example enum. And so what we have here are enum names, where it gives us some default uh, names, green and blue. And you can rename it by selecting green and rename it to say whatever you want to say, power. And blue can be energy. Oops, type it down here energy and whatever that means and you can click below your two here uh, this is supposed to be power there we go and you can click below in a new line create a new name and you can call it you know whatever battery <laughs> so just random words or of course whenever you're actually doing this for real you will have things in mind that you want to put in the enumerate names list but again example enum and hit add so now I have example enum and power and now we have a drop down menu power energy 
battery. <laughs> Those don't mean anything, I'm just making up words. But if I open the attribute editor, go down to our extra attributes, you'll see example enum, and we have our drop down list power, energy, and battery. So this is just a way that you can add custom attributes. And you'll notice that if you go up and look at any of the other attributes in the scene, they all have the same types of controls, such as translate, rotate, scale, shear. They all use the vector attribute type. Uh, the rotate order uses the enumerate list attribute type or data type. Uh, inherits transform here as a checkbox using the boolean data type. So all of the attributes that are on things to begin with in Maya, you can add the same types of attributes using these different data types and access them in the extra attributes section of the attribute editor. And so none of these will actually do anything by default. You're just adding the attribute. And then it's beyond that and we'll go over some things and we'll go over all these things in future videos of course but beyond that you can then add controls that make these things plug into other things and do things and not just display because right now obviously this will do nothing all of these are just sliders and input boxes and check boxes and stuff that don't actually do anything they just are examples to show you the types of controls you can make getting them to actually control something it would be the next step and that'll be a future video so this has been add attribute there's also edit and delete attributes which we'll go over next so with my locator selected we'll go to modify edit attribute you can select which attribute to edit let's just say for example uh, example inu so down here we have our numeric attribute properties is it keyable or not again we have minimum maximum values and then our enumerate names list which since we're selecting the enumerate attribute we have access to which we can change energy to tree you know, whatever for integer we can say it has a minimum has a maximum we can uncheck has minimum for example so suddenly our integer we can go beyond negative 10 like it originally were uh, like, like we originally set but when we go up to positive numbers we can't go beyond 10 so you can change that particular uh, limit here in the edit, edit attribute window so again this is just ways you can edit the attributes you've already made close that, select my locator, modify, delete attribute, again gives us our list of attributes, let's say the example boolean, I don't want that anymore, we can hit delete, and it simply removes that from your object. Pretty self-explanatory I think. So yeah, here, this has been adding, editing, deleting attributes, your own custom attributes to an object, getting your own custom channels in the channel box, and controls in the attribute editor that you can then use for future commands that make those things actually do something. So this has been the Maya Tool Belt. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like, subscribe, uh, comment. If you have any requests or suggestions, let me know. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching.